The Aztec football team hasn't played on the SDSU campus since 1966, but evidence of those games can still be seen in these decaying stone terraces in back of Viejas Arena. This used to be the San Diego State football stadium. Now it's just a remnant of what used to be the bleachers of the old Aztec Bowl. But it's a font of memories for longtime Aztec football fan Tom Abels. Oh, it was a great place. It was fun. And as you can imagine, if you look, you can see what a great spectator stadium it was because the first seats you had elevation or you weren't down on the ground and you were within a few feet of the sideline, you were really in the game here. It's not the same in Qualcomm Stadium, which the Aztecs have shared with the Chargers for decades. The problem with Qualcomm, it's just too big for us. For example, Ken and I, we've just been on the road, and you go to a place where they've got maybe 25, 30,000, looks like a pretty good crowd. You get 25 or 30 in, in the queue, it looks like nobody's there. The days of the old collegiate stadium aren't gone. In fact, some universities have decided that the warmth of an intimate campus venue is just the feeling they need to help alumni feel connected and willing to support the alma mater, even if it means spending a lot of money on a new stadium. Maybe the best comparison to San Diego State is seen in my old alma mater, the University of Minnesota. For many years, the Gopher football team shared a downtown Minneapolis enclosed stadium called the Metrodome with the Minnesota Vikings. Joel Maturi is the U of M's former athletic director. He says within 10 to 15 years, people began to wonder if moving into the Dome had been a mistake. Well, some people never felt that it was a good time to move to begin with. And with the lack of success, lack of student attendance, uh, lack of alumni coming back to campus, even for homecoming, there was a little bit of a, of a discussion. Those discussions culminated with the opening in 2008 of TCF Bank Stadium, built on campus on what used to be a field of parking lots. Maturi says the change in game day atmosphere has been palpable. We had homecoming a couple of weeks ago, and it was great to drive down the street and see the kids having fun, see the older uh, alums come back. It's an energy that, uh, that Minnesota hasn't seen in 25-plus uh, years when they were in the Dome. Bank Stadium, as it's commonly called, was built at a cost of $290 million and seats up to 50,000 fans. Remember, this is Big Ten football. A more modest collegiate stadium is in the works in Fort Collins, Colorado, where Colorado State is creating a structure with a seating capacity of 40,000 at an estimated cost of $220 million. Back in San Diego, California State Senator Marty Block says a new stadium could be part of an expansion of San Diego State. Speaking outside the 70,000-seat NFL arena in Mission Valley, he says that expansion could create a kind of satellite campus in the place of Qualcomm Stadium and its parking lot. I think the stadium ultimately gets knocked down. I don't think anybody wants it for anything, and it's frankly too big for San Diego State. and. San Diego State as the sole tenant couldn't make a go of it anyway. So instead of having the big Qualcomm Stadium, you put in the housing and classroom buildings, everything else I've mentioned, and then in a fairly small portion of what is a huge parking lot, you can build a much smaller stadium. Hopefully you bring in a, a Major League Soccer team. And in San Diego, there'd be a big market for Major League Soccer. You bring in a Major League Soccer team, you make it a public-private venture. Though. Block's plan is full of unanswered questions. Those include whether Major League Soccer, the MLS, wants a soccer team in San Diego that would share a stadium with San Diego State. Neither Major League Soccer nor the San Diego State Athletic Department would comment for this story. So how do you pay for a university stadium that would cost up to $300 million? Split the cost with a pro soccer team, charge a student fee, solicit state funding, alumni donations, sponsorships, and naming rights. The possibilities are many. Joel Maturi, the former athletic director at Minnesota, says at least you're not asking taxpayers to give money to the billionaires who own teams in the NFL. College is unlike the pros. Uh, you know, I truly believe the Gophers will be playing here at the turn of the next century. Tom Fudge, KPBS News.